All right, so it's my uh, second time back at the gym in about four months. And since I only have about an hour to work out, I'm gonna be hitting all the compound movements. So it's gonna be front squat, it's going to be incline bench press, conventional deadlifts, and bent over heavy rows. And I'm gonna aim for about three sets of eight to 10 for each of them. Well, that was a doozy. You really learn a lot about yourself when you gotta get a bunch of compound movements done in about an hour, but got it in, so feeling pretty good. Now, time to go eat some spicy fries and undo all the work I've just done. The, uh, the topic for today's video is going to be about selecting your personal trainer. So, a lot of people might have put on a little bit of weight over this uh, pandemic time. You know, the snacks are available. We're not moving as much, especially if you had an active job and you're laid off. So perhaps there's some weight that's been gained. Yeah, hope you're all happy now. Good guy wins, bad guy loses. Big friggin' surprise. I love happy endings. Uh, you've lost a little bit of muscle, so you're thinking about when you get back to the gym, getting a personal trainer. Today's video is directed at what you should be looking for when you're choosing a personal trainer. The priority starting off is to know your goals. What do you want to accomplish? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to build muscle? Do you want to build strength and power, speed? Are you training for anything in particular? Are you, do you have any competitions coming up? So these are all things that you need to consider and they're the priority you need to make. Get that set and then move on to selecting who you want to train you. Once you have those down, then if you don't have a gym membership, join a gym, uh, look up reviews online, all that sort of thing. Uh, you can also hopefully be able to see some of the trainers before you even go there. You can look up their bios and that. Get to the gym and immediately the first thing you need to start doing is just watching. And I know it sounds kind of creepy, but just start observing the trainers and their interactions with their clients, with other members of the gym. What I want you to do is do a little bit of research on YouTube about exercises and you know, watch some of my videos if you, and ask me questions about things that you're not sure about. I'll try to make some videos showing you how to do certain exercises, what mobility you need to do, stability, that kind of thing. Get to the gym, start surveying the trainers, see people that have the body type or the type of training method that you like. Start to vet the trainer. Then what you're gonna do is see how they interact with their clients. Are they punctual? Are they attentive? Are they pushing their client harder? Are they monitoring their rest periods? Are they writing things down? Are they tracking their progress? All those things will show you whether or not that's a trainer you should be investing in. If you see them talking to a lot of people at the gym, if you see them looking around, not really paying attention, they're always looking at their phone. Now, sometimes they might be using a timer on their phone, but you'll quickly be able to tell the difference between someone who's using it intentionally and someone who's distracted by it. That's the second part is start to identify who you think would make a good trainer. Don't just take whoever they give you. Often they'll give you a free session, a free sit down with the trainer. Take it if you want, and then that gives you an opportunity to see the trainer, but don't jump right onto the first trainer they give you. Really take your time to observe and collect data. From there, once you have your goals, once you've observed the trainers and you have a better idea, you have maybe two or three that you're interested in, then start chatting with them, talking to them. Get to know what they know see where their education is, see what their diplomas, certifications, all that sort of thing are, and maybe their history. Perhaps they don't have diplomas and certifications, but they're very experienced and they're very ambitious and they know what they're talking about in the realm of the training methodology that they take. Vet the trainers, get them to down to a couple, and then start talking to the two or three that you're interested in, get to know them, because at the end of the day, this is an investment. Think of it like buying a car. You, you might even put as much money into a vehicle as you will your training, especially if you want to do this long term or if you are going to do this long term. This is a crucial decision for the sake of your body, for the sake of your health, for the sake of your progress. Do not take it lightly. You've got your trainers that you're interested in. Now sit down with them, talk with them. Once you've figured out those couple people, 
This is where the personality comes into play. Take the person that you have the best relationship with, the person that balances that level of professionalism as well as sociability. You don't want your trainer to be your best friend, but you also want them to know a lot about you and you're gonna learn a lot about them. So it is a very personal relationship at the end of the day. The more you like each other and the more your personalities match, and the more that the personality of the trainer represents what you want to accomplish from your training, the better you're going to be. If your personality is one that needs someone to push, like a drill sergeant. then that's the sort of trainer that you need. If you're a very motivated person and you simply need the information, you just need to learn how to do the exercise, how many reps, how many sets, rest period, all that kind of thing, then find that type of trainer. Maybe you don't want the trainer that's gonna be yelling in your face to push you because you don't need that. So personality is key. Find the personality that works and you'll be better for it. This is gonna be a long-term investment you want to make sure they're investing in you, you're investing in them. Let's make it mutual. Beware of the trainer that sits with you and over promises. You sit with a trainer and you say, hey, I want to lose 30 pounds in two months. And all of a sudden they get excited and they're like, oh yeah, I could totally do that. You know, let's cut that time in half. I can get you, I can get you 30 pounds down in a month. Red flag. <laughs> Don't trust that trainer. That trainer is saying whatever they need to say to get you as their client. Better to sit with someone who's gonna be honest with you and who's gonna say, hey, I love your ambition, I love your goals, but you're gonna be better to adjust your time frame and what you think is possible. My goal is to get you there as fast as possible, as safe as possible, but we're going to scale back that a little bit and say, hey, let's just lose a pound a week, a pound and a half a week, let's keep it consistent. So that trainer is the one that's looking out for you. That's the one that you should be focusing your attention on. Watch trainers for an extended period of time too. So don't just watch them for a day or two. Try to monitor them for a week. If you can, maybe come at different times. See the different clients they're training, the different types of clients. Watch to see how they train them. Are they training them all the exact same? Are they giving them all the exact same movements, the same rep schemes, everything? That might be someone who's just winging their programming and just kind of cookie cuttering the exercises for everybody. You want to make sure that they are consistent with what they do. They don't necessarily need to be doing the same thing, but you also need to watch out on the other end of the spectrum. Are they the wow trainer? Wow. The batsu ball into step ladder into single arm lunging rows and are, are they just a thousand different movements every day and not the same workout every time? That's the person that's just trying to wow the client. Find that person who's in that middle, who's in that medium, where they are consistently showing that they are adapting the program to their clients. Now, that might be tougher to, to acknowledge, especially if you're new and you don't understand the movements, but at the end of the day, does it look like it makes sense? Does it look like it's something that is involving weight, is involving a pattern? Pattern and consistency are what are gonna make the difference. Watch for that. Beware of the trainer that is all about the wow factor. At the end of the day, this is gonna be a great investment for you. I'm excited that this is a decision that you are looking into and a decision you're trying to make. If I forgot anything, I'll maybe make another video about it or you can ask me in the comments. I'll try to respond if there's any concerns you have. Perhaps you've been looking at a trainer and you are wary about getting into personal training. I highly recommend that, especially if you're new at the gym, to pay for a couple sessions. Find a good trainer, pay for a couple sessions. You don't have to make it a forever thing. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm investing for years and years and years. If you want to, that's awesome and that's great and I, and I admire that. But I think everybody needs to get a trainer for at least the first little bit when they're in the gym so they can get comfortable with machines, understand what muscles they're working, understand the principles of weight training and cardio. And if you can get those and combine that with your own personal research, you're gonna be way ahead of everybody else. Good luck in this journey, and I hope to hear your results and see your results soon, okay? Have a great day, talk to you soon, bye. We can turn that Frankenstein you see in the mirror every morning into a Frankenstein.